15, verse 21 to 28. I'll read aloud, read along with you silently. Hear now the word of the Lord, we're reading this morning from the Revised Standard Version. And Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came and cried, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely possessed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. Y'all read carefully. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged and said, Send her away, for she is crying after us. He answered to the woman, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, it's not fair to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, oh woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Being a prayer answering God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For another Sunday to worship in the house of prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you have been good to us all week long. Yes. You kept us all week long. Yes. You brought us all week long. Yes. We came here to say thank you. Thank you. And to worship you. Yes. Now, Lord, we are like empty pictures before full front. Oh, yes. Fill us up right now. Right now. Help us to get the thing you have ordained for us, the blessing you have ordained for us. Help us to get it, Lord. Send a double anointing to break the yokes. Let everyone leave here free. Whatever was binding them when they came. Let everyone leave here delivered because of the power of the Word of God. Let us be so blessed that we can't keep it to ourselves. It spills over into somebody else, somewhere else. This God is our prayer in the name above every name. The mighty and master's name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. God's people said, Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell them, Thank God, your neighbor. Come on, come on, come on, come on. No, you ain't God. Let me see. I'm so excited. So, thank God you're here, neighbor. Thank God you're here, neighbor. So, neighbor. God's got a blessing just for you. So, you better grab it. Yeah. Otherwise, I might catch it by accident. So, neighbor, there is a word from the Lord. The word of the Lord this morning is women who move God. Look on the other side and say, thank God you're here. Church is better for me when you're in it. History Month follows Black History Month. And this is fitting because the two major movements in Western history of women developed out of the struggle of black people for freedom and liberation. The first women's rights movement started in July of 1848 in Seneca Falls, New York, in a Methodist church. Five women who were leaders were women who had been leaders of the abolitionist movement. You recall abolition was the first mass movement, the first protest movement designed to end African enslavement. Elizabeth Cady Staten, Lucretia Mott, Mary McClintock, Martha Coffin Wright, and Jane Hunt were all abolitionists fighting for freedom for Africans. While they were fighting for freedom, it occurred to them that they too were oppressed. Yeah. 
while they were fighting to end the subjugation of Africans, it occurred to them and they saw it in their fight, their own subjugation because of their gender, because they were women. They started the first women's rights convention there in Central Falls. What is often called the second wave of the women's movement started in Western history in 1963 with the publication of Betty Friedan's book, The Feminine Mystique. The Feminine Mystique. In 1966, a few years afterwards, Betty Friedan became the first president of the National Organization of Women. Uh, we know that group as, as acronym now, a group that lobbied for the federal government to enforce anti-discrimination laws for women. The goals of the women's movement in 1960 are clear. They were clear for those women. Equal pay for equal work. Yes. And end to domestic violence. Yes. I saw a driving here this morning, and I saw a man, he was up in this woman's face. Mm -hmm. And he looked like he was going to do something. I, I had that feeling. Any of y'all ever had a feeling you want to get involved? My daddy used to tell me, when you see a man and a woman fight, don't ever get involved. Because you don't know what's going on. Yeah. One day I saw a man mistreating a woman and I stood up to her. And I stood up to him and I said, leave her alone. That woman said, I'll knock your teeth out. Yeah. I came home and I said, daddy, you was right. He said, I'm not here because I'm nice or I know something. You better listen to me. So I didn't get out of my car. I didn't stop. I just lifted my hands and prayed. Because prayer changes things. Yeah. Their goal was an end to domestic violence. Their goal was to break the glass ceiling that limited women from moving into advanced positions in jobs and their careers. Women could only go so far, they could only do certain jobs, and the women's movement wanted to break those barriers. Those of the women's movement in the 1960s were clear. They wanted an end to sexual harassment. Now, all of us know about the Me Too movement, but the roots of the Me Too movement, which I think, although it can't go too far, is a very necessary movement for our society because of the extent of sexual harassment that women go through. Every woman here knows what it means to walk down the street and have somebody say something and be afraid in your response. We men don't have to deal with that. We men are not worried about that. But it happens to all of our sisters and our mothers and our daughters. In 1983, or the last, the last, the last, the last uh, goal of the women's movement is the sharing of responsibility for housework and child rearing. Women argue that men should be responsible for some housework and men should be more active in child rearing. That it was not women's work, it was parents' work. Oh, help me, hold it. 1983, black feminists began to use the term womanism to describe their participation in the women's rights and black liberation movement, dual participation. This term womanism, somebody said womanism. Womanism. It's taken from the novelist Alice Walker's 1983 book, In Search of Our Mother's Gardens. There in that book, Walker has a short story called Coming Park, which she first wrote in 1979, where she used the term womanist. Can I go ahead and talk? I believe I will. I want to make it very clear that I, as a leader, support women. When I came to this church, I was asked certain questions about women in leadership that I believe by the 20 people who interviewed me, hallelujah, I was asked these questions. Did I believe in women preachers? I said, yes. Did I believe in women deacons? I said, yes. Do I believe in uh, women uh, having significant roles? I said, yes. Because I had come to the place where I recognized women's oppression as a black freedom fighter. Fighting for freedom in all the places that I've been, I recognized what those white women recognized who were abolitionists. I recognized that women, too, were oppressed. Uh -huh. Then, another reason why I support women, and I agree, because this church had women who were involved in its founding. Nona Willie is one of the founding women. There's others, but she stands out because of her husband, 
Brother James S. Wood that I was close to. She was one of the founding members of this church. Uh, there's a picture, I often talk about it, of uh, Robert Moses and uh, Mary of Water about to dig the hole for this church. And a little sweet Pam Ingram is in the picture. Oh, uh, she didn't have her current beauty and sage wisdom. She was just a little girl in a bonnet. But she was there from the beginning. I support women as a leader because the Lord Jesus said, a house divided against itself shall not stand. Some of y'all think Abraham Lincoln said that, but Jesus said that. Amen. He quoted Abraham Lincoln. And uh, if you oppress women, you have divided your house. Can I go ahead and talk? If you oppress women, you have divided your house. And the whole black community can't progress if half of it is kept down. I support women because the study of the Bible reveals that female nature came from God. Genesis 1 and 7 says God made them. And then it says male and female, he created them. Uh, I could go further and tell you that there are scriptures that refer to God's womb. And men don't have a womb. There are scriptures that refer to God's breast. And men normally don't have breasts like women. But the female nature, everything in it, comes from God. Uh, and, and then also I support women because I've learned a strong Christian man does not need to fear strong women because he's grounded in God. Brothers, if you have a strong woman, be happy. Be glad. Thank the Lord. Because if you're strong enough as a man, hallelujah, her strength won't face you. In my experience of strong black women, I was raised, I talked about Sister Hyde, mother, last week, I was raised around strong black women. And my experience is most of the time, strong black women are a black man best friend. There is nobody that supports a black man like a strong black woman. And so uh, I would urge everyone uh, to understand that we all need to support women. I would not be where I am without strong women. We would not be where we are as a church without strong women. You see all the things we have done, it could have been done just by men. Women have to be in leadership positions to do it. And I'm so glad, I'm so happy that we still have in this church today strong black men. women because the Lord Jesus Christ was a lifter of women. In Jesus time, uh, they were uh, in a culture and a tradition where even talking to women in public was considered a disgrace and something not to be done. Yet Jesus always finds these women to talk to. <laughs> Yet Jesus is always walking up to women talking to them and allowing women to talk to him and even to touch him. Oh, help me, hold me up. Can I go ahead and break? And here today we have such a case. We have the case of the Canaanite women. In, in uh, the book of Mark, it calls her the several Phoenician women because she was from Sidon. Now, you need to know where Tyre and Sidon, that's where Jezebel was born. Canaanites were people that the Jews despised. In the current hostility against Palestinians has led to 34,000 dead and over 12,000 women and children killed. 100 people standing in line for food killed the other day. That's an old attitude among Jewish people that it was existing in the time of Jesus. So when, when, when Matthew says it was Canaanite, that set Jews' teeth on edge. So here's this Canaanite woman that we are talking about today as a woman who moved God. Five things I want to say about her very quickly, and I'm through. How many things did I say? Number one, she came respectfully. Everybody says she came respectfully. She came respectfully. She calls him Lord. She calls him son of David. This is the title that all the Jews usually use for Jesus. Yeah. But she no doubt had learned who Jesus was and what it was about. And she came respectfully. And she had a problem. 
She said, my daughter has a demon. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I know there's some mothers here who feel the same way. Then my daughter's got a demon. I know there's some fathers here who feel the same way. Well, what you ought to do is do like her. Come to Jesus and come respectfully. That's the first thing she did. She came respectfully. She came not ashamed to acknowledge him as Lord and Master. She came acknowledging his historical lineage, something that her people did not do. She got out of place to come to Jesus in the right place. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. How many days did I say I had? Number two, she ignored her haters. She ignored her haters. The Bible says that the disciples told Jesus, send her away. You know what? Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I don't know why some religious people are always in everybody else's business. Here's a woman trying to get help. Here's a woman working. Here's a woman coming to Jesus. And the disciples said, send her away. She's messing up everything. She's messing up your preaching, Jesus. She's messing up your talk. Get her out of here. They don't tell her to come back later. They don't tell her to put up the Baptist finger. They say, get her out of here. She's messing up protocol, but she ignored them. Hallelujah. Can I go ahead and preach? How many things did I say I had? Five. Five. She was so determined, she ignored the silence of Jesus. Mm. Help me, Lord. The Bible says she was talking to Jesus, and he didn't say nothing. That, that seemed to be kind of rude. I talked to you, you didn't say nothing. That's right. Then when he did speak, he said, I can't take bread from the children and give it to the dog. Uh-huh. Come on. What an insult. I know some of you women in here, you would have broke. <laughs> Come on, Pastor. Are you calling me a dog? <laughs> oh, y'all ain't gonna Go ahead, Pastor. But she was determined. Jesus decided. Disciples say, get out of here. Her response was to say, Lord, help me. Lord. How many days I say I'm going to tell you? Number four. She came back hard when the Lord was harsh. Yes. Everybody read out to me. She came back hard came back when the Lord was harsh. Because now, now the commentators will tell you that the word in Greek that they use for dog is the word for pet. That still is a harsh statement. Can't take the bread for children and give it to my pet. That's still harsh. <coughs> it ain't cut. It's a harsh statement. Mm -hmm. But for Jesus' harshness, she came back with a determined answer. She said, yeah, I might be a dog. But even the dogs get the crumbs from the master's table. She didn't let her emotions stop her from getting her blessing. Can I go ahead and break? She realized that a crumb from God is better than a whole dinner from the devil. How many things I say I had to tell you? Five. Number five, she got what she wanted from the Lord. Look at your neighbor and tell him she got what she wanted from the Lord. <laughs> Trust my mother's that she got what she wanted from the Lord. She got what she wanted from the Lord. This woman moved the heart of Jesus from silence to deliverance. And at that moment, her daughter was healed. Her daughter wasn't even there, but she was healed. Are there any women here this morning who want to move the heart of God to this year? Then I want you to follow the example of this woman. Mm -hmm. Number one, come to him as Lord. Yes. Women, if you're going to move God, you have to put God first. Mm -hmm. She said, Lord, it wasn't just a title. It was an expression of a life commitment. Mm -hmm. Women, you want to come to him as Lord. And Lord means you put him in charge. Mm -hmm. Press your way to Jesus, but recognize him as Lord. Recognize him as your master. Let me see the women in here who want to move the heart of God. Go help me, Holy Ghost. Number two, ignore your haters. The disciples tried to send her away, but there's always a religious person that wants to get between you and God. Sometimes they'll come to you and say, I got a word for you. 
Yeah. Sometimes when people come with you with a word, if it ain't this word here, all right, you tell them they can keep the word for themselves. Uh, you got to learn how to ignore people. Look at your neighbor and say, some people you just got to ignore. <laughs> Do you all not know that there's people that hate to see you happy? Do you understand your joy bring misery to some people? Now somebody said, why is that, Reverend Taylor? It's not psychology. I don't know. I just not know those kind of people exist. What you got to do is you got to learn how to ignore some people. You got to learn how to push them to the side. She didn't waste time responding to the disciple. She ain't come to see the disciple. She came to see Jesus. You need to remember this. Even when you have trouble with people in church, you didn't come here to see people in church. You came here to get God. You didn't come here for a fashion show or the looking for. You came here because you know in your heart, in your life, you need God. Somebody shout hallelujah. You got to learn how to ignore certain people. Hallelujah. Because they need help themselves. Next, you got to learn to cry out to God. Even in the silence. If you all have learned anything from me in 33 and a half years, and I believe some of you haven't, <laughs> of the way you act. But if there's any of you here that learned anything from me, I hope you have learned how to cry out to God. A cry comes from a deep place inside of you. A cry comes from a pit of hurt and pain. A cry ain't trying to look pretty or look good. A cry don't really care about the protocol. A cry reaches down deep because it's headed up high. And I hope you have learned to cry out to God. And sometimes people tell me, and it always amazes me, but I understand it. Sometimes people tell me, Pastor, I really don't know how to pray. Mm, here's a prayer for you. Lord, help me. You ain't got to have all the phrases. I came down and moved for there two generations. You ain't got to do all that. Lord, thou God with me. You ain't got to do all that. All you got to do is say, Lord, help me. <laughs> Let me see somebody try to get look up and say, Lord, Lord help, help me. Let me see somebody cry out, Lord, Lord help me. Are there any women here who want to move the heart of God? I came to tell you, even when you feel like God is not there, Learn how to wrestle with God. That's what this woman is showing us. Jesus didn't say nothing, but he did say something he insulted her. But the woman said, I will not be deterred. I will not be denied. And I'm going to wrestle with this silence. I'm going to wrestle with this insult. And I'm going to keep going until I get what I came for. Look at your neighbor and say, learn how to wrestle with God. Learn how to wrestle with God. Somebody, learn how to wrestle with God. Learn how to wrestle with God. I'm going to give you a wrestling formula. Can I talk? You know how there's secrets? I was watching the YouTube the other day. The man was talking about boxing. He was saying, when you do this, then you do this. It's boxing secrets. There's wrestling secrets. The wrestling with God is called J and J. Look at your neighbor and say, J and J. J and J. Tell your neighbor, J and J. learn how to wrestle with God. Learn how to wrestle with God. With J and J. With J and J. The first J come from Jacob. Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. When you wrestle with God, you got to have that mindset. When you wrestle with God, you got to have that Jacob attitude. The Bible says, hallelujah, that he wrestled all night long. Hallelujah. Your time of wrestling might not be short. Your time of wrestling might be years and years. Your time of wrestling might be decades. But you've got to first have that Jacob attitude. God, I will not let you go until you bless me. The result is God will change your name. The result is God will touch you in a special way. The result is you'll get what you wanted and you'll lose what you had. You lose your trouble, you lose your trauma, you lose the terror of your experiences. When you say, I won't let you go until you bless me. Everybody sitting there say, Lord, I won't let you go. 
until you bless me. I said the rest of the formula is J and J. The second J is Job. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Now, Job didn't really think God would slay him, but given his current circumstances, he really didn't know. Kids did. Wealth gone. Wife acting crazy. Body full of oil, so weak he can't stop dogs from licking sores. Friends came, and then they said, well, 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 brother, you must have done something really bad, because you look terrible. Help me over there. But what Job did, is Job said, all of my appointed days, I'll wait until my change. What Job did, Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Let me hear everybody say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I didn't get what I want, but yet will I trust him. I don't have what I thought I should have had, yet will I trust him. I got pain in my body, yet will I trust him. Seems like everything's going wrong, yet will I trust him. Even if God kill me, I believe he'll raise me back alive. Though he's slain me, yet will I trust him. Now touch your neighbor and say, that's how you wrestle with God. Touch somebody else and say, that's how you wrestle with God. Look at three people and say, J and J, J and J, J and J. I'm not talking J and J. J and J, J and J, J and J, J and J. Jacob and Job knew how to go hard. Jacob knew how to go hard in wrestling. Job knew how to go hard in wrestling. Hallelujah. And I can't even tell you, women know how to go hard in God. Learn how to go hard in your prayer life. Instead of getting on the phone telling everybody your trouble, learn how to tell God. Learn how to go hard in the Word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of the Lord abides forever. Learn how to go hard in obedience. Learn how to go hard in giving. Learn how to go hard in loving people. Learn how to go hard in serving. And learn how to go hard in praising God. Praise God when you don't have any reason. When the bottom has fallen out, learn how to go hard. Give your praise for God. Because well, that's J and J. Women, I came to tell you, don't be impatient. Wait on the Lord. Tell somebody, tell them, wait on the Lord. Oh, I feel something in me. I need y'all to help me preach. Look somebody there now and say, don't be impatient. Wait on the Lord. Tell them, why are you praying about it? Let him fix you first. But before he fix the problem, he's got to fix you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout glory be to God. I came to tell women and any man that's interested, take the crumb you got. Take the crumb you got. Take the crumb you got. Because Jesus said all you need is a mustard seed of faith. Mustard seed is so small you can't hardly hold it between your finger and Thumb. All you need is a little something, something, because a crumb from God is better than a whole dinner from the devil. I gave you a crumb, hallelujah, but you leave with a loaf. Mm -hmm. Look at your neighbor, tell him, neighbor, I came with a crumb, but I'm going to leave here with a loaf, because I'm going to wait on God. Tell a neighbor, if I wait on him, if I go hard, then the Lord will be moved on my behalf. Look on the other side and say, neighbor, you need to holler sometime and cry out to God. You need to say, Lord, I need you to help me. You need to say, Lord. You to stop by here right now. Anybody believe it? Put your hand together and give God the Lord. I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, what do you want me to say? The Lord said, when you get near the end, I want you to speak for me. I want you to speak in my voice and tell the people I know 
what you're going through. But you need to learn how to pray, Lord, help me. He said, tell, tell the women, I know you're all alone sometimes. But you need to say, Lord, help me. You need to tell the women, I know you're ready to give up sometime. But you need to pray, Lord, help me. You need to tell the women that I said, I know how you feel. My God is not moving. But learn how to say, Lord, help me. Somebody need to know I've been lost sometime. But you need to say, Lord, help me. Anybody here know that God is a prayer answering God? Anybody here know that God is a way making God? Anybody here know that God will not leave you nor forsake you? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God knows you've been struggling. But today, take your daily bread. You've got a promise. deliverance from God. Look on the other side, say, neighbor, take the crumb of faith and begin to praise God. Say, neighbor, take the crumb of hope and begin to praise God. Say, neighbor, take the crumb of deliverance and begin to give God glory because I feel God moving right Somebody let the neighbor go and shout yes, shout yes, shout yes, shout yes. I feel God moving right now, and all you need is a little crumb, and all you need is a little something, something. Take a little something, something, and give God the glory. And start praising God. There's an anointing that will break the yoke right now. There's an anointing that will give you a breakthrough right now. But don't wait till the battle is over. You ought to stop shouting right now. Don't wait till your problem. Oh, 
where to start. Start with praising God. Start with thanking God. I don't care what's going on in your life. God knows what you need. And God is working on it right now. So give Him glory. Give Him praise. Shout any way you can. Because the anointing that breaks the yoke is here right now. Somebody go ahead. Let's go. 
Yeah. 